Hi everyone. So we are going to speak about the different ways how to measure the blood pressure. There are different ways for that and the thing is there is always a big confusion how to use those methods to accurately measure it in fact. And that's where the lot of confusion also tends to happen. So we all are very much aware hypertension is indeed a very common cardiovascular disease <clears throat> and also a big risk factor for that. And in fact to diagnose hypertension we do check the blood pressure readings a lot of most often of course in the clinical settings however with times changing what has been happening is two types of out of clinic blood pressure measurements we all are aware of so something like the ambulatory blood pressure and also what is called as the home blood pressure monitoring in fact and if you will be anyways look carefully at someone's blood pressure readings as well we can clearly see there is a big variation in those measurements so for example sometimes it will be going high sometimes then it goes down there will be something is called as dipping pattern and also the nighttime blood pressure and there can be something like a, a morning surge in the uh, so there is a lot of variability in the blood pressure so that is the reason why there has been three different types of blood pressure measurement which has been uh, uh, which is already in practice what is called as the office blood pressure measurement the ambulatory blood pressure me measurement or otherwise the one which is called as the home blood pressure measure so in the office bp measurement what happens is yes it is useful for the daytime blood pressure measurement however ambulatory or the home bp measurement is one of the best one for that Similarly, if one trying to uh, see for the nighttime blood pressure or dipping, in fact, that is the time when ambulatory blood pressure measurement is advised for that. Similarly, if someone is saying there is a lot of variation in the 24 hour blood pressure, so that is the time when ambulatory blood pressure is advised for such patients. And uh, if you are trying to think for the long term blood pressure variability, then that is the time we should advise for is home blood pressure measurement okay similarly uh, what happens is if you are trying to rule out a white coat or mask hypertension diagnosis that is the time ambulatory blood pressure or the home blood pressure measurement is advised similarly a lot of times what happens is um, patients are worried about the costs so that is why then okay you can ask for the office blood pressure measurement okay but ambulatory is also pretty fine for that similarly if one is really worried about the uh, the uh, you know patient time and involvement okay it is pretty low for the office measurement however it is pretty high of course for the home blood pressure measurement so there are different parameters you know for the need for the intensity as well so how would you diagnose blood pressure for a person so there is a diagnostic algorithm which was already uh, introduced in American Journal of Hypertension. So what had happened is uh, if someone is having a out of the office blood pressure measurements has been pretty high. So during the visit one try to measure the blood pressure and also we should try to get the history and the physical examination of the patient in fact. Okay after so that is the time also we should try to rule out if someone is having a hypertensive urgency or emergency and of course. If someone is having that hypertension is diagnosed however just on the first visit we should never label one as this okay and uh, that is the time uh, you can order for some of the diagnostic tests either during the visit one or two you should try to ask for again uh, second visit preferably within the first month itself and that is the time you will try to again check for the blood pressure if the blood pressure is more than 140 90 you try to also uh, and yes if someone is uh, having a target organ damage like the diabetes or chronic kidney disease so that is the time you should label them okay and uh, similarly so what will happen is if the blood pressure readings are not so high so not so high means for example the blood pressure is in the range of like uh, uh, systolic is like 140 to 179 or the blood pressure is uh, diastolic one is in the range of 90 to 109 so there are three options which is available to us in the form of one is like a 
home blood pressure, uh, like let's go to the clinical blood pressure monitoring. So what will happen is if it is slightly higher in this range, you can ask again for a third visit as well. And yes, if again at that moment as well, if it is more than 160 by 100, yes, it is hypertensive. Or if you have done an ambulatory blood pressure or home blood pressure monitoring in the meantime, and if it is coming, you know, if it is in that range, again, you are going to label them, okay? And even in the subsequent blood pressure uh, readings, if systolic more than 140 or diastolic more than 190, uh, sorry, 90 only, you will definitely label them as hypertensives. Okay, and if it is going to be less than 140-90, you will have to continue to follow them up. As I, as I was telling you, ambulatory blood pressure is a good thing, but it has its own limitation as well, like if it is really available. So if it is available to you, then if you are trying to look if the awake blood pressure is more than 135 by 85, or even the 24-hour blood pressure is, is in this range, you know, uh, if it is lesser than this range, you will have to continue to follow up. However, if it is more than this uh, recordings, of course, you are going to label them as hypertension. Similarly, for the home blood pressure monitoring as well. If the values are less than 135 by 85, you should do a, continue to follow them up. However, if the values are more than this, that is the time you will have to label them as hypertensives. So a big question comes is what are the different values which uh, beyond which we are going to label those people as hypertensives. So normal values for the office blood pressure it should be normally is less than 140 by 90. If someone is having those comorbid conditions like the diabetes, chronic kidney disease, all these problems so less than 130 by 80 is pretty fine as well similarly ambulatory blood pressure monitoring the awake average is you know less than 135 by 85 is considered to be normal and there's slightly lower range for other patients with comorbid conditions similarly for as sleep average is of course slightly lower okay less than 120 by 70 for the home blood pressure monitoring averages considered to be less than 135 by 80 as i already emphasized that for the comorbid conditions like that there's slightly lower average it's a there's very important concept of mass hypertension why i'm worried about that is because a lot of times what will happen is uh, we may not be able to diagnose them well for that and the problem what is happening is those people who are having this mass hypertension they tend to have almost it's not just the incidence risk is higher in fact the relative risk as well of cardiovascular disease is pretty high in the mass hypertension so one of the other important things which comes into our mind is what about threshold for initiation of treatment and target values that is why you need to be aware of also these values as well that when to initiate uh, therapy for a patient for example for diabetes it is different of course for if it is someone's just only home blood pressure measurement again uh, you know the values are slightly different for that and again the target is going to depend upon what kind of comorbidity the patient is having so yes home blood pressure measurement should be encouraged okay to, uh, especially for the patient to get involved in the uh, care for that so but you need to be able to choose like okay what kind of those patients where you are going to ask for this so if uh, you're trying to just diagnose a hypertension or someone is having a white coat hypertension or even a masked hypertension as well that is the time you should ask for that okay but yes uh, not all patients are suited for the home measurements because uh, yeah if someone is really anxious in response to the high blood pressure or if someone is having you know they are specially challenged or if there is a arm is not suited for the blood pressure curve for example you know there is like a conical shaped arm or there is a bony deformity over there or if someone is having an irregular pulse 
that can definitely make it difficult as well, okay? So, one of the important things, especially for the home blood pressure is, we should try to teach those people how to take those measurements, okay? So, it should be, the measurement should be done on the basis of duplicate measures in the morning and the evening, and at least for an initial seven-day period, okay? And the singular and the first day home blood pressure should not be considered, okay? Because better to try to take some averages, okay? So that's why it is really nice, in fact. So as I said it, we should not just tell them, okay, what are the ways to measure? In fact, we should also tell them how to use the device. Even in the usage of device, some of the important factors are what is the appropriate cuff size, okay, and similarly validated size a device. Because a lot of times uh, people, they do come to us with those devices and where the measurements would not be accurate enough and they'll be coming up with those false readings. In fact, similarly, at least an alternate year or at least every three years, the device needs to also be standardized by the biomedical engineer, in fact. And we should also try to train them, like how to measure their blood pressure or interpreting those readings, in fact. And the verification of these values is, again, very, very important. So how to do that? So as I already said it, try to, uh, you know, again, check those values. You can standardize them in the morning, in the evening, at least for initial seven days, okay? And uh, as I was already telling you that, a lot of times, so when should be the measurement be taken, in fact? It should be done before the medication is being taken, okay? So, there are different uh, societies which have recommendations are there. For example, for the British Hypertension Society, which has validated those cuff sizes as well. So, what happens is, so the mid-arm circumference should match to the cuff size, in fact. And always try to read those device instructions, whichever device are using. And as we already said it, if it is the values are more than 135 by 85, of course they are. It is abnormal and um, there is lower threshold for comorbid conditions. So what are the indications for the ambulatory blood pressure monitoring? So as I have already said it, what happens is, nearly one-fifth of the patients with office hypertension may be having a normal reading, in fact. And yes, if someone is having a normal reading, yeah, you may not need to treat them. Why? To give them unnecessary medication. However, there can be, if someone uh, deserves a treatment and you are not able to give them a treatment, those patients are going to continue to suffer. The internal damage is going to continue to happen. Similarly, for the mass hypertension, mass hypertension, why? What is happening is, if uh, you did a office blood pressure, which is less than 140 by 90, okay, and for the comorbid conditions like diabetes or CKDs, which is like 130 by 80, that is the time you will ask for such patients and the 24-hour blood pressure you got done. And if it is more than 130 by 80, in fact, okay. So you should start thinking, especially for the target organ damage. And yes, if you don't treat them, adverse prognosis may definitely happen. So there is a phenomenon, what is called as nocturnal dip and morning surge. So in terms of that, what happens is, um, it is pretty normal in fact, but however, so something is called as non-dipper. Non-dipper, what happens is, uh, during the night times, normally, the blood pressure is going to come down, in fact, slightly. Uh, and so and what is called an exaggerated surge exaggerated surge what is going to happen is uh, if the blood pressure shoots beyond 160 by 100 so these are the factors which is associated with not only higher risk for myocardial infarction and stroke but also uh, it predisposes those people for other comorbid conditions as well and yes non-dippers are associated with adverse cardiovascular prognosis. Okay? So, 
when else uh, what else are the other conditions in which you are going to ask for ambulatory blood pressure so you whenever you're trying to assess the efficacy of the treatment as well so if someone is already having an office white coat effect and uh, you're trying to see are they really responding well so that is again the time you can ask for that so after discussing all these things now we can conclude about our talk is so we can we know ambulatory blood pressure monitoring assesses the blood pressure during routine daily activities typically during the 24 hours however the home blood pressure monitoring is assessing the temp uh, blood pressure at specific times during the day and the night okay and yes the blood pressure measurements in the ambulatory way or the home blood pressure monitoring has of course significant cardiovascular disease uh, association as well and the ambulatory and the home blood pressure can quantify the mean which is out of the clinic in fact and uh, yes nighttime blood pressure monitoring or the adrenal blood pressure patterns are pretty important as well and a lot of guidelines are emphasizing the need for ambulatory blood pressure especially to rule out what is called as the white coat hypertension in fact similarly yes uh, there are barriers which is uh, existing for the ambulatory or even the home blood pressure monitoring however let's uh, uh, yeah not forget uh, we are trying to help or treat the basic problem rather than trying to create confusions for our patients so that's why we need to be slightly more careful